So just in case you're wondering what I'm actually doing here, well, this is my new... I needed something sustainable and consistent with all my incoming soda strings now. As you know here at the moment, uh, yeah, as you know at the moment, I've got two breakers in here. One is for the east roof, one is for the west roof. And the east roof already has two strings connected in parallel up there. And you can see it. Maybe not. But now I've got a third string coming and there will be two more strings. So all in total we will have five strings per side. I cannot just parallel them here in the breaker. This, this is not good enough. So I wanted something to terminate the solar panels first and then go from there into the breaker. So I came up with this idea to have this switchboard mounted up here where all my solar panels come in. Yeah, and then we've got solar panel string number one, positive, negative, string number two, positive, negative, and string number three, positive, negative. Well, if you are wondering why there is a breaker in here, this is just a placeholder because the seller on eBay sent only one of these fuse holders, even there were two advertised, and then they refunded me the whole lot. Okay, so I have ordered some more of these fuse holders now somewhere else and hope they're arriving soon. Until then, the breaker has to be the placeholder. So all these will be all my solar inputs from all the strings. Then we've got space for two more on this side here. So all in total, we will have 10 fuse holders in here, always positive and negative. And then from here, from the output, we are going onto these bus bars. And you can see we've got the positive bus bar here and the negative bus bar there. And these two wires here, will go down into the electrical cabinet onto my DC breaker. And now it's a bit of doubling up because we've got the fuses up there and then we've got a breaker inside the enclosure again. And um, well, there's the breaker, there are the fuses. This is only like less than half a meter of cabling. But with this now, I can just terminate one string on the roof and can start working on it. Or if something is not working correctly, I can do troubleshooting with all these fuses now and the other strings can still be connected and deliver power to the battery. Don't you just appreciate how I got this ladder in here and kept working in this tight space in front of the electrical cabinet and wired and mounted this switchboard there? Yeah guys, this is, this is what I have done today. I also grounded the third solar string on the, on the roof. This is all done. Everything is cabled and I'm just waiting for the sun to go down now until we have a lower voltage on these strings and then I can take them off the circuit breaker in there and connect everything up to the fuse holders in there. Um, eventually I will have another switchboard up there in the roof and this crocodile cable situation then will disappear and we will have exactly the same setup with a little switchboard and 10 fuses in there for our one, two, three, four, five strings of solar panels. They're all terminating here and from here collectively they go down in this pipe onto the other circuit breaker inside the electrical cabinet. This is, this is my thinking at the moment. It, it doubles up a little bit. We've got the fuses and then we've got the circuit breaker inside the electrical cabinet. But I wanted something where I can quickly turn off one or two strings or even all of the strings on one of the sides of the roof. And I think I've got exactly this achieved now with this little switchboard here. Ah, uh, we still got 75 volts here on the east roof. Hmm, I could potentially disconnect the MC4 connectors for these two strings and then we've got zero voltage here and I can start working straight away. I'm not sure it is 4.30. It could take another hour or so until it's safe. There we go. Disconnected on the roof. I think 20 millivolt is pretty safe to work with. So let's get started. There we go. These are the two strings I just disconnected on the roof. And remember, we had these uh, fuse holders here, these fuses in here before. And I had them, had both strings connected to these fuse holders. And then everyone told me I should um, use these DC breakers. 
for safety reasons you know if one drips it uh, disconnects the other one as well so i changed this over and just operated them in parallel but if one string is faulty here the other one could feed back into the faulty string so it's not the best solution and the more strings you connect in parallel this is safer this is safer I've got one. I should straighten them up first. Yeah, come on. Come on. There we go. There's no um there's there's no writing on it. Ah uh, I don't know which one is which now. Really? Well, I thought I've got them all marked with little plus symbols and double plus symbols and what is going on? I don't know which cable is which now. Okay, let's reconnect on the roof. Just one string and then find out what's going on. Going down the ladder. I have now identified and connected positive and negative of each string down here to the fuse holders. And before we turn them on, we do a little measurement just to make sure we've got the right voltage. So this is string number one. 80 volts. Polarity is correct. String number two. 77 volts. Polarity is correct. And this is the brand new one we have just installed. And we've got 75.6. Polarity correct. All right, let's turn on the new one first. All right, so we should have now voltage up here on the bus bars. We do, 75 volts. Okay, nice. So this here all seems to work. And now I have to, I just have to um, connect these two leads here to our breaker. And then we can turn everything on and we've got uh, three strings on the east roof as well it's another 21 watts isn't that amazing i can't wait for tomorrow and see the 21 watts going into the battery i think this is another 0 0.001 kilowatt hours or so for the battery it's amazing it's good okay so here's the big moment I'm just connecting the first string. So we should have should have 50, 60 volts on here, 76. And we should measure the same 76 volts down here. Yeah. But polarity is wrong. Oh yeah. Because that's correct. Now that's all good. There we go. 76 volts perfect okay so if i turn this one on now we should get voltage here on the solar charge controller again doing it yep there we go 55 volts ah, it's all connected yes okay let's put the other ones in and see what happens with the voltage second one is in and the new one in no short, nothing. It's amazing how this all works, right? <laughs> I am always amazed. <laughs> okay, 64 volts we have. Yeah, well, and now I can just, well, for example, isolate string number two and the other two are still running and I can maintain or work on this string without having to disconnect the whole lot. And then if you wanna shut down the whole system, you just flick these two and you turn off everything. This is all the incoming power. And then your charge controllers have no solar input anymore. So, yeah, that's how it works, right? Nice. So, this all seems to work. You still get some amps. Come on. 21 watts. Show it to me. All right, guys, I think so far I'm cleaning up these um, cables now a little bit here. 
this is all of the video so far this video for the last four or five six seven days or something it feels like a week i was working on this east roof upgrade but it's done now and we can have a look online about more panels to connect them all here to our system at some stage as always guys thank you so much for watching thanks for all your support here for all your beer donations actually talking about beer donations i've got a surprise for everyone who has donated beer it's not an early access thing or something like this no no i'll talk to you about this in one of the next videos stay charged and safe and we shall see us again in the next video coming out very soon i've got i've got another yeah we've got some very interesting stuff coming up so stay tuned thanks again for watching guys see you in the next one bye bye <music>